Welcome back. In this video, we will look at all the diabetes medications and we will compare what makes them different. The first and most important medication is metformin. In fact, this is the only medication of the entire diabetes class that is proven to decrease the cardiovascular risk. It is very, very effective and commonly used as first line. Keep in mind when we say diabetes, we are referring to type 2 diabetes, where the patient have two problems, too much glucose or sugar in the blood, and insulin resistance. Metformin solves both of these problems. It decreases blood sugar by decreasing the gluconeogenesis in the liver, so it decreases the liver production of glucose. It also decreases the insulin resistance. The second class are the sulfonylureas, and they are the medications ending with the word IG, like glomipride. Remember the two problems? One of them was the insulin resistance. The diabetic patient cells become resistant to insulin. Sulfonylureas tackle this problem by producing more insulin from the pancreas. They basically squeeze the pancreas to release all the insulin it has. So of course, there is a risk of hyperglycemia, which we do not see in the first class. The third class we have is the megalotinides, and these act in a similar way to the sulfonylureas by squeezing the pancreas to release more insulin. However, they have a very short half-life. So the patient takes this medication about half an hour before eating. So by the time they finish their meal, the effect of the drug has already peaked and is already going down. So the risk of hypoglycemia is very narrow. The next class is the alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. And this is very interesting. Whenever we eat sugar, the sugary molecules or the carbohydrates are very large and they cannot be directly absorbed. So we have a special enzyme in our lining of the gut that is called alpha-glucosidase. This enzyme breaks down these large molecules so that they can be absorbed. The alpha-glucosidase inhibitors basically inhibit this enzyme. So these large sugary molecules will remain in the gut and they will be excreted. And the side effect that you would expect is that the bacteria in the gut will feast on these large glucose molecules. So the patient will have a lot of bloating and symptoms of abdominal pain. Next we have the thiazolidine dion, and these work by decreasing the insulin resistance. GLP-1 analogs mimic the natural hormone GLP. Normally this hormone prepares the body for sugar and releases insulin. So GLP-1 analogs work the same way, by releasing more insulin. On the other hand, the second class, DPP-4 inhibitors, work by decreasing the destruction of GLP. So they reach the same effect by increasing the lifespan of the natural hormone GLP. Both of these classes, GLP-1 analog and the DPP-4 inhibitors, help patients in weight loss, but especially GLP-1 analogs. These have been proven to decrease the patient's weight. The sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors work by excreting more glucose in the urine. Normally, the glucose will be secreted in the urine and reabsorbed and goes back into the blood. These medications simply prevent the glucose reabsorption so the glucose remains trapped in the urine. And of course, these patients tend to have more UTIs or urinary tract infections. Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helped.